that's my friend Jarrell. And that's the big version of Gucci Man. On this day, I took Jarrell to see the Birthday Bash concert. I learned about his story two days prior, and this was the full day. Swag you Slim. You're at Benny's in the ATL. This is his first store in uh in Atlanta. That's carrying the Swag You clothing brand. You got the Swag You merchandise up in here. Swag You clothing brand. You know what I'm saying? It's our first store in ATL. We live in a microwave world. Everyone wants success now. Everyone wants to try the next money grab idea that they see on the internet and buy that course. What if I guaranteed you? that you would become a millionaire in 10 years doing the thing you love. Simply winning collection, uh, Jordan, first joints, first championship. So we give a swag out today. Our little homie Jarrell, got birthday bash tickets. You know, we got snapbacks. We got Chucks, and he don't even know it's coming. So we here in the ATL and that's how we gonna do it. So I'm just getting my stuff together. Probably gonna throw all of his stuff out. Bag right here. Let's do it. All right. So we here at Jarrell House. We about to ambush him. He don't know what's going on. Got a bunch of swag for him. Swag T-shirts, swag uh, hoodies, uh, some Converse, ATL hats. That's where we in, A-Town. Follow me. It's in our home. They come? What's up, man? How you doing? Good. What's your name? Jarrell. Jarrell? Yes. All right, man, my name Haas, man. I came to see you, came to check you out. I can come in? Uh, sure. Sure? Oh, you just gonna let a stranger in the house like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just playing. But, what's up, man? How you doing? Good. Good? Yeah. So, you wanna show me around? How you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm all right, I'm Haas. Hi, I'm Nina, Jarrell's yeah. mom. Jarrell's mom. Yeah. So, I got this bag right here, right? Uh -huh. Got a couple things for you. Right. I heard that, uh, you like rap music, right? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. I heard that, uh, you know, you wasn't going to birthday bash. So I came to bring you some stuff, get you swagged out, so you can go to birthday bash with me. All right. You, would you, you, you with it? Yeah. You'll come to birthday bash with me? Yeah. All right, you got, I got all this stuff, but you're just going you're gonna to look all sweet, all swagged up. All right. You know what I'm saying? So check it out. You want to tell everybody right, come Thank on you. Okay, yep, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> elephant swag joint for you. You know what I'm saying? I know you can do something with this. Yeah. All right? Yeah. We got, and we got the tickets for you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem, man. You ready for the concert? Yes, sir. Who you want to see most? Uh, whoever y'all got. <laughs> <laughs> Who your favorite artist? You like T.I.? Uh, T.I. T.I., you going to be there? Wiz. Wiz? Uh, B.O.B. B.O.B., what about Future? Yeah, I like Future, too. Oh, you going to be there. Um, it's just, I had a design for a shirt or something, but I decided to go with that one. Like a t-shirt, huh? 
Yeah. yeah. They were going to start a t-shirt business with me. Were? Yeah. Hmm. Good idea. Yeah. I kind of saw this on a picture of this on the internet. Mm -hmm. So I just drew it. And yeah, pretty much. That's, that's dope right there. Yeah, this is one of my favorite quotes. Don't judge me. Yeah. Mm. That's that's powerful right there. Why why is that one of your favorite co quotes? Because I do. When I'm happy, I just do random things, and some people might think like, "Oh, that guy's crazy" or something. Or, no, I'm just I'm just in a good mood. Mm -hmm. and that's just how I am. Right. So you like. <clears throat> You know, I heard your story. You know, I know, I know you've been through a lot. Like, how how do you continue to you know to just strive and try you know try to get better and try to get well and just deal with everyday life? Um, I just I just think positive about you know there's you know I can if I could get through this you know it, it, the grass is greener on the other side and. You know, this is just an obstacle that I have to overcome. And just after this, you know, it's just going to be a nice little road for me to continue on. That's dope. So, uh, can you can you kind of take a little interview? Sure. And kind of tell me, you know, about it, this journey a little bit? Sure. Uh, you want me to get up or? No, you can stay. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I guess the, uh, second grade, that's, you know, that's a, like an extremely long time. Yeah, it's been nine years. Um, it started 2003. Mm -hmm. He was diagnosed on Mother's Day. Oh, God. And um, January of that year, um, he started having headaches mm -hmm. every morning. And back and forth to the doctor and they came up with um, allergies, juvenile, migraines, everything, but um, they could never find out what was wrong. Um, and then he started throwing up occasionally, at least once a week, okay. you know, in addition. So when, he, when he's like, when at that age, he's about what? what he's about eight. What? He's about eight years old. He's okay. eight years old. <laughs> wow. And, um, the day before he was diagnosed, I had him, my nephew, um, and my daughter at the movies. And the kid, I was talking to somebody and they started laughing. And my daughter said, Mom, Mom, look at what your girl can do. Look what he can do. And I looked and his face, the left side of his face was pulled up shaking. And I'm freaking out. And I'm just looking. And they're just laughing, giggling. Look at what he can do. And I said, son, don't do that. And he's like, okay, and then it stopped. So the next morning was Mother's Day, and I'm laying in bed because it's early in the morning. I'm on the phone with my mother, wishing her a happy Mother's Day. And Jerome walks in the room. This side of the face is pulled up again. His mouth is open because he can't close it. He's drooling. And he said, Mom, my head hurts. Oh, my God. And I'm looking at him. I said, okay, get back in bed, and I'll be there in a minute. And I told mom, my mom I need to go check on him and see what's going on. So I hung with her, and I went and checked on him. And I looked at him because I was thinking about what happened the day before. And I looked at him and I said, are you doing that or is it doing it by itself? And he looked at me kind of with a look that, that said, I'm going to tell her what she wants to hear. And he said, I'm doing it. I said, then son, don't do that because it was freaking me out. And I said, don't do that. So he said, okay. And, you know, I called my husband, told him what was going on. And when he got home from work, um, which was like 5 or 6 o'clock that evening, he comes in and he goes and checks on Jarrell and he comes back to me and he says it just happened again and when it happened I grabbed his face with my hands he said he is not doing that I said then we need to get him to the hospital and when we got him there they did the CAT scan and that's when they told us it was a brain tumor um, fortunately they were able to completely remove it and like five days later he walked out of the hospital they knew after didn't even have to cut his hair off. Wow. He walked out fine. Six months later, came back. So they removed it again, and they did radiation. Mm -hmm. Seven months was, later. Was he, he was he like inpatient then? The second yeah. time. Yes, yeah. well? and he was there about five days again. 
But um, after the surgery, then they treated him with radiation. Right. Um, then seven months later, it came back in a new spot outside of the radiated area. So they removed it a third time. So that's three surgeries in like a year and a half. Right. So they removed it a third time and they did radiation again and then they put him on chemo. Okay. So he was on chemo for about three years. He was off chemo almost two years when the fourth one showed up outside of the new radiated area. Right. Um, that one I wouldn't let them treat. I let them remove it surgically. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to try natural treatments because I like to try and you, you know use herbs and natural treatments. So that's what we did, and it held out for nine months. Right. Nine months, it came back in that same spot, but it was two instead of just one. And actually, when the surgeon went in there, he actually found a third one. So it came back with a vengeance. Wow. So we realized that the tumors don't like radiation, and it never came. It's never come back to the areas that were radiated. Mm -hmm. So they, this last time they radiated his entire brain and his spine, and he's currently on chemo. Wow. But he's a tough kid. Yeah, I know, I can tell, you see, I mean, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can tell. So unfortunately, a side, of the fact, a side effect of the radiation has caused weakness on his left side, because mm -hmm. it um, created a spot on his brain that they were treating with steroids. So, um, he just had an MRI. We haven't gotten the results yet, so we're hoping the spot, you know, goes away, and um, through therapy, he'll be able to regain use of his left side. So that's what our our hope and prayer is right now. Right. Genesis two. Uh, I got the yes. It's somewhere in this box over here. Oh, Genesis. Style in here, man. It's pretty comfortable for you in here, right? Yeah. Do you ever come out of here? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I don't think I'll come out of here. When I was a teenager, I'd be up in this joint. Had to have a sign like, yo, don't, do not enter. I'll be up in this joint. Gaming. I need some games, that's why I have to come out. <laughs> when I look back, I still can't imagine that I would be experiencing these things. I was filming the biggest stars in hip hop on the stage and hanging with a kid that had five brain surgeries. Being there and filming the rappers didn't mean much. I don't normally attend concerts. What meant everything was being there with Jarrell, who had more courage and resilience than I will ever have. This was bigger than me. The opportunity that I have been afforded to share Jarrell's story and bring awareness to childhood cancer in a way that I had never planned has been a blessing to say the least. A few months later in December, I helped Jarrell launch that Don't Judge Me t-shirt line. And we did a pop-up and we sold t-shirts and hoodies and pizza boxes. I go back to my statement of guaranteeing you would be a millionaire if you did the thing you love for 10 years straight. Well, I can't tell your future. Maybe it would take five years. What I can tell you is that you can't beat consistency and hard work, but my 10 year success is not defined by becoming a millionaire. My 10 year success is defined by these experiences that are priceless. Chase purpose, it lasts longer than money.